today we're doing a teardown of this, and this is a QRFE 4G router. And this is just like a normal router, except you put a SIM card in the bottom of it, and it runs off your standard 4G mobile network. So the SIM card goes in this little slot here, and it just slides in there. And on the back of it you've got your, you've got power. You can run it off of a micro USB power adapter, which is quite nice. You've got your four Ethernet ports and a reset button. Uh, the WPS button I don't think does anything on this one. I think that's all done in software now. What I'm going to do now is take this apart and see what's inside it. Let's go ahead and do that now. If we just flip it over, we can't immediately see any screws, but we can see these little feet here. Uh, so I think that's probably going to be the way to get into it. So let's see if we can just take those out or off. Yep, and immediately I can see my first screw. And let's take that one off. Dental picks, surprisingly useful things in electronics. Not just for your teeth. We need to dig that one down there. There we go. I'm actually trialing using 4G internet at home instead of BT because my download speeds with BT are about 36 megabits per second, which isn't really very fast considering I live quite near a town. Now, when I checked the speed with my current mobile provider, I think it was on uh, like a 70 down and a 50 or 60 up, which is much faster than what I get with BT. So providing I can get this thing to work with my Sangoma uh, VoIP phone, I'm hoping this will completely replace my broadband router. Right, let's take the, uh, the bottom off of this thing, shall we? In other news, I have a new reduction lens for the camera on my microscope, which gives me a very reasonable uh, field of view now rather than the ridiculous one I used to have so I'm looking forward to uh, using that in another video this feels very nice, this is a I think the router costs like 50 quid or something like that shipped from China shipped really fast as well like within a couple of weeks this thing turned up and the actual router itself the plastics feel like nice quality it doesn't feel really really cheap and nasty it actually feels quite well built so let's have a look how do we get into this thing hopefully this lid just unclips where's mr spudger spudger located so uh let's have a look how am i getting in here This is harder than I thought it would be. Uh, there we go, I think we're in. It's really, um, yeah, it's actually put together reasonably well, I think. There we go. Got a nice solid feel to those clips. Very nice indeed. It's almost like they don't want idiots taking this thing apart. And yet, here I am. Okay. What would I do without my 
handy spudger. Well, I wouldn't take crap apart so much, I guess. There we go. Come on. Be nice to uh, tell BT to sod off. Okay, oh, that is very. That is very minimalist. What have we got here then? Let's zoom down and uh, have a closer look at that. And on this motherboard, on the right hand side here, we have a micro USB input and our 12 volt input, and that goes straight into a buck converter, presumably to convert it down to 5 volts. On the back here, we have our Ethernet sockets and the reset button, and we have our Ethernet transformers just there. Let's have a closer look at some of the chips on here. On the right here, we have an IP175G, that's this chip here, and that is a five port fast ethernet switch. And to the left of it here, we have an Atheros AR8033, and that is a 10100 ethernet chip. Now as that's a one port chip, obviously that is then connected to the IP175G to provide the extra ports that the unit needs. Further over on the left, we have all the cellular hardware. Now I'm not an expert in cellular technology, but let's go through these chips one by one. This chip here is some Micron RAM. This is a Qualcomm MDM9207, and that is the 3G, 4G LTE modem part of this. Down here, we've got a power management IC, and that is a Qualcomm PMD9067. You can tell it's power management. It's got quite big capacitors near it and also some inductors. And this chip down here is a WTR2965, and that is an intermediate frequency IC. If anyone knows what that actually does in the context of uh, cellular networks, please let me know. This chip here, I couldn't find anything about when I googled it. That is an RPM8743. Couldn't find anything on Google about that. It might be maybe a flash chip for the firmware for this device, uh, or for this part of the device. Um, so yeah, I'm not absolutely sure what that is. And at the top here, we have an RTM7916, and apparently that is a small broadcast transmit receive front end module. Now, of course, what I haven't seen yet is a processor and some RAM and any flash storage. So I'm assuming all of that is on the underside. So let's go ahead and take that circuit board out. Okay, so we can just unscrew this. And unscrew this. Need to take these antenna cables off as well. I've taken a photo of those so I know where they go back. Two of the antennas are for the 3G, 4G modem and the other two are for the Wi-Fi. Let's take those antenna connectors off then. They can be quite delicate, these can, so I can't be too brute force with them. Although I have repaired these before, so they are quite repairable and replaceable. Okay, let's take this out. Wow, there's nothing on the underside apart from a micro SIM card slot. So I guess everything is actually in this module here then. That's really cool. So I guess the heart of it then is the MDM9207, uh, which is that chip there. I was definitely expecting to find a bottom load on this board, but no, wow, that's, um, well, it helps keep the cost down, I suppose. And if, if everything's already integrated into that chip, why add extra when you don't need to? And also, interestingly enough, this module seems to be kind of like a pre-built module. Because you can see by the way it's been soldered in that, you know, this isn't something that was necessarily designed for this product. This is not the shelf component that they've they bought in to put into their product. Well, that was really interesting. I hope you enjoyed that teardown. If you did, please like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Cheers. Bye-bye.